Good morning, Franklin Campus. Hello and welcome to um, this Sunday morning service. My name is Ray, and if I haven't had the chance and the privilege to meet you yet, um, I, let me just say hello and welcome to this morning's Sunday morning service. On behalf of all of our staff and our council and elders and uh, just all of our leadership team, I'd like to say welcome this morning and let you know that we are super, super happy that you have chosen to worship with us this morning. We do not take for granted your being here in this moment, in this time with us. And so we just want to say welcome and uh, we are believing for great things in your life um, through this service this morning. Before we get started, I just have just a few announcements that I'd like to bring to your attention to make sure you are able to get involved and know all that is going on in the Franklin campus this fall. There is powerful things that happen when we come together and pray. And so I just want to make sure that every single one of you knows that prayer is happening. We have some mountain movers, some, some prayer partners that get together on a weekly basis to see God's presence, to see God's hand, to see God's face um, manifest in our lives. I'm sure you all could agree with me that we need God uh, maybe more than ever right now. And so we do not want to miss the opportunity to come together and to uh, go before the throne of God and to uh, call upon his name. And so we have two specific prayer times which you can be involved in Sunday mornings on Google Hangouts, also on Tuesday mornings at 6.30 a.m. Uh, you can either go in person down to Madison Place and pray there or you can also jump on the Google Hangouts link and be a part of that prayer virtually from your home but wherever you like to uh, pray from we do want you to join in with us um, at least one of those times during the week to be a part of prayer prayer is so important so powerful in the life of a believer and we want to pray with you Next announcement, our house churches signups have been going for, I think, a week now. And so if you haven't signed up, I would like to encourage you to do so. Signups are still open and available. Um, we have uh, houses in almost every quadrant of the city. So uh, please, please, please click the link, find the link in um, our weekly church email. And it's also in the description of this video where you can sign up and bring your family to a small group environment uh, where it will be social distance and safe for you but still to come together and to grow with other believers during this time so please sign up for house churches if you have not already women announcement for all of our women tonight I know there was a little uh, confusion in the announcements last week but it was not last week you didn't miss it it is tonight so women's night uh, worship and, and connection night is happening tonight so if you um, need any details on that at all please email Kim Darter or Tara Russell and they can get you all of the details that you need but that is happening tonight ladies uh, please get involved and take advantage of this opportunity to get together with other ladies and iron sharpens iron uh, so one person sharpens another so ladies um, get together tonight to pursue God and to build on relationships with each other Youth, my favorite announcement. Hey, uh, parents, you should have received a newsletter from me uh, within the last week, just letting you know of some few things that are going to be happening in September and October. Um, we will get the scheduling for you for November and December um, as those dates get closer. But we just finished up our first Bible plan of the semester called the Daniel Dilemma. And if you missed it, don't worry. We got more Bible plans coming. But we really, really, really would love for um, our students to... Uh, get plugged in with us and, and track with us that way. It's an easy way to do it virtually. It's done right through the Bible app, uh, bibleapp.com, actually made by Youth Version, and you can be a part of that. We are giving out prizes for students who um, uh, read with us the short devotional each day and leave a comment. So take advantage of that when it comes back around. Youth also stay tuned because we got some great things happening. Like for example, we got movie nights happening on Sunday nights 
at 3 p.m. at the Jackson's house. So that's Mr. Lamar and Miss Megan's um, home. We're going to be hosting small groups. We're going to be watching movies and looking for God's fingerprints throughout those movies. So we're going to be pursuing God's presence and sort of training our senses to uh, know the comings and goings of the Holy Spirit through entertainment and through culture. So you want to be a part of that. Movie night's happening on Sundays at 3 o'clock. Uh, we will be alternating middle school and high school. So uh, you can contact me or in the communication that I've already sent you. You should know which week you can sign up. But if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. High schoolers, we got a bonfire night happening in Grand Haven on the beach in October. Middle schoolers, we're going to have a, a, a trip happening where we can just enjoy this fall season with corn mazes and warm apple cider and those kind of things. So you please, please, please stay connected. Uh, we'd love to um, grow with you during this season and uh, just come together in smaller groups. But come together so that we can uh, just build each other up and encourage each other during this time as we finish this year. We want to finish strong. We want you to finish strong and be your best in this season for God. Well, that's all the announcements that I have right now for today. Hey, I just pray that this service is a service unlike any one you have been to. I know that uh, you're watching this virtually and I know that this can start to seem mundane and routine, but Anywhere that God's presence is, freedom is available. Freedom and breakthrough is available. Amen. And so I'm praying that this service, that just one more facet of your heart would just get freer. That one more facet of your your uh, uh, mind would get freer. That one more facet even of your physical being would get freer and be able to draw closer to God. The Bible says in the book of James that if we draw close to him, that he will draw close to us. So I'm praying that his nearness and that his closeness will be your reality. Wherever you're watching this from, that his nearness, that the reality and the tangible presence of God will be your reality in a new and fresh way this morning. And so let's get ready to worship and just know that our staff and our leadership team, we are praying that you would have a fresh encounter with God. God bless you and thanks for being here this morning.
You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The King is alive I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm
we fall down, we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus, at the greatness of his mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. That's why we sing. That's why we cry out together, unified as one. Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. Welcome everyone to this morning's worship and the word. Usually around this time, I share a prayer or a pastoral update. And I have one very important pastoral update that I'd like to share with you this morning. It's been in my heart for some time. I wrote down some thoughts. I've been journaling quite a bit and put this together that I wanted to share with you. I'm going to read it and then invite you to join with me in prayer. So here goes. This week we find ourselves again in a place of deep grief and overwhelming concern for the soul of our nation and our community. On March 13, 2020, earlier this year, we learned of the police shooting and death of Brianna Taylor, a young woman born and raised right here in Grand Rapids. On September 23, just two days ago from now that I'm recording this, a Louisville grand jury decided not to pursue charges concerning the circumstances surrounding the tragic death of Miss Taylor, a native of Grand Rapids, who was also a former Grand Rapids public school student. In this moment, I wanna ask that wherever you are to speak her name out loud, Brianna Taylor. Her name has been added to a long list of black and brown brothers and sisters whose senseless murders have not received justice. This verdict hits Grand Rapids in a new way because Breonna Taylor is one of us. Her family lives here, she graduated high school here. And so for many people across our city right now, this verdict isn't just another tragic case. This is family. This is someone who won't be in Grand Rapids for Christmas or Thanksgiving to see the colors change. The air feels different. That's why today I wanna to speak to you as pastor. And anyone who calls themselves a follower of Christ has a role to play in dismantling this demonic wall of division that the enemy is working on over time to build both globally and locally. Much of it comes from white supremacist philosophies that are tolerated, ignored, or embraced. And they result in the establishment of systems and policies with tragic implications. And this week we saw how it played out for our Grand Rapids family. And now speak this out loud wherever you are. Help us, Jesus, our Savior. This week I've been praying, let my heart be broken with the things that break your heart, O oh God. And will you speak that prayer wherever you are today? Lord, break my heart with the things that breaks yours. Today I want to speak on behalf of Madison Church leadership that as followers of Christ, we must pray. We must seek the Spirit of God together. Learn, educate, listen, repent, ask questions, protest, lament, show up speak up and be active in our response to these situations to be salt and light of Christ. Mario Powell, the president of Brooklyn Jesuit Prep, wrote an article based on Psalm 13 that I wanna share with you today. Psalm 13, which says this, how long, O Lord, how long, O Lord, will injustice prevail? George Floyd. Ahmaud Arbery, Tamir Rice, Oscar Grant. How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? Eric Garner, Trayvon Martin, Emmett Till, and Brianna. These are names we know, and these are words from Psalm 13. How long, O oh Lord? Psalm 13 is the lament of black America that has been crying out this question for centuries, and we need to join in on this prayer. Together, all of the body of Christ must cry out to the Lord together for change because we need it. We need healing. We need forgiveness. We need change on the individual, on the communal, on the systemic levels to dismantle 
racism. Lord, show us now what role you are calling each of us to specifically play. Show us what square inch you want us to be involved in. Show us where, Lord, you are empowering us through your Holy Spirit to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God because we see the work ahead. The criminal justice system must be reformed. Substandard education must be improved. We need to change unjust laws that produce economic inequality. Show us collectively and individually the next immediate step to, to take passionately and actively as members of the body of Christ by your grace, O oh God. And let me be clear, this is what it means to be a follower of Jesus. This sharing in the experience of others is what it means to be one body in Christ. Galatians 6, 2 says this, share each other's burdens because when you do that, you fulfill something. You fulfill the very law of Christ. So wherever you're at right now, join me in prayer. Giving honor to God who is the head of all of our lives. Lord Jesus, we cry out to you how long? How many more innocent people will be murdered? We are running out of words, Lord, and we are longing for action. We are longing for change and we are longing for your kingdom. We cry out in repentance. We cry out for your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Break our hearts for what breaks yours and raise us up. Raise up leaders and change agents, and protesters, educators, and peacemakers. Raise up disciples of you of every race and culture to bear witness to live into the Christ-centered ministry of biblical reconciliation back to God and back to one another. Hear our cry, O Lord. Heal our land, O Lord. We cry out to you. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. So this morning we are continuing on in our brand new fall sermon series called Resilient Faith, Gospel Hope Found in the Book of Daniel, and in particular, our title is simply today called A Dream Fulfilled, and today I simply want to let Scripture just speak over you, wash over you today, just to receive this whole chapter in full as we see what God does through His holy and living and active Word. We love the Word of God here at Madison. We love the Gospel, and we love to experience what God does through His Word to change us, shape us, and mold us to be His disciples and to be disciple makers. So as we jump into Daniel 2 today, I want to give just a little bit of some background. Number one, I want to talk about the city of Babylon. That's really the location of where we are at within scripture. And then number two, I want to talk about the power of a dream. So in Daniel 2, if you were to just look around yourself in terms of where you would be, the people of God are in exile. They have been deported from their homeland of Judea. They've traveled hundreds and hundreds of miles to be in exile in Babylon. And as they're in this brand new, completely unknown culture and city, as they look around, what did they see? Let's check it out. Number one, if, uh, if you were there today, it'd be very warm. You'd see lots of palm trees and massive ruins that continue in the distance that show a former ancient kingdom of Babylon. Also, perhaps you'd walk past uh, foundations of buildings that once stood with large walls and extensive brickwork. Or you might see a reconstruction of a massive blue tiled gate that was just one of many entrances into Babylon. So that's just a little bit of the context of where we're going to be camped out at today. But then number two, I wanted to share the power of a dream. And I'll just simply say this, that in the ancient world, dreams meant a lot. They were a big deal. They believed deeply that 
dreams could reveal future events. And a king's dream had so much significance, especially for an entire nation, that the interpretation of that dream could sway the king to make steps to prepare for what those events could be. And this is a very common theme that throughout scripture, you're going to see visions, prophecies, dreams, parables. And I would simply want to just begin by praying a prayer of inspiration that as we walk through a chapter that is about a dream, that we would have understanding and wisdom from it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for your holy, living, and active word that is always on time. And Lord, we ask for supernatural wisdom and understanding of this passage. Speak to us through the unfolding of this dream that we read in your scripture and the interpretation of this dream to apply it today. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. So in today's passage, I've really split it up into three sections. It's three scenes because this whole thing is just one narrative. All right, so the first scene is this. And this first scene tells us, number one, the limits of human wisdom. Daniel 2 verse 1 says this, In the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. His mind was troubled and he could not sleep. And let me just stop there for a moment because the phrase says that his mind was troubled. And another way of looking at that phrase is to say that his spirit was struck. And one commentator says this, the Hebrew word there that his mind was troubled is the Hebrew word pa'am. So wherever you're at, say the Hebrew word from the gut, pa'am, right? And that means to strike. Pa'am means to hit something with a hammer. It can also mean a rapid heartbeat due to extreme agitation. And I don't know if you've ever had a dream where you've been like struck by a hammer or you woke up with a rapid heartbeat. That's the kind of dream that he had. And those are really rough dreams to experience. And as a result, this brother, Nebuchadnezzar, he could not be calmed. He could not sleep and his sleep was done for. He couldn't sleep. And, and I've had that before. I've Talk to many of you over the years as well that if you have a hard time going to sleep, trying to shut off your mind in order to sleep, it's tough. It's brutal. And it's a tough place to be. And this is exactly where the king is at. He is agitated over this visceral dream that he had. Let's see what happened. So the king summoned the magicians, enchanters, sorcerers, and astrologers to tell him what he had dreamed. When they came in and stood before the king, he said to them, I have had a dream that troubles me and I want to know what it means. Then the astrologers answered the king, may the king live forever. Tell your servants the dream and we will interpret it. The king replied to the astrologers, this is what I have firmly decided. If you do not tell me what my dream was and interpret it, watch this, he says, I will have you cut into pieces and your house is turned into piles of rubble. But if you tell me the dream and explain it, you will receive gifts from me, rewards and great honor. So tell me the dream and interpret it for me. All right, so let's just step back here for a little bit. In a small way, I've played this game with my kids of picking a number between one and 10 and see if they can guess the number that I'm thinking. This is that except on steroids because you got to carefully consider what his demands are. He wanted his servants to recite the actual content of the dream before they interpret it. And the stakes are high. Note the threat that if they don't get it right, and as brutal as it sounds, it was commonplace to be executed with houses destroyed if you do not follow the king's orders. They are powerless to save themselves, and they have always been. That's the point here that we'll get to a little bit later on. But they are freaking out and they are trying to make things work. Watch what happens next. Once more, they replied, let the king tell his servants the dream and we will interpret it. But then the king answered, I am certain that you are trying to gain time because you realize that this is what I have firmly decided. If you do not tell me the dream, there is only one penalty for you. You have conspired to tell me misleading and wicked things, hoping the situation will change. So then tell me the dream and I will know that you can interpret it 
for me. The astrologers answered the king, there is no one on earth who can do what the king asks. No king, however great and mighty, has ever asked such a thing of any magician or enchanter or astrologer. What the king asks is too difficult. No one can reveal it to the king except the gods, and they do not live among humans. And this is when the, temp the, the temper of Nebuchadnezzar just flares right up. He says, this made the king so angry and furious that he ordered the execution of all the wise men of Babylon. So the decree was issued to put the wise men to death and men were sent to look for Daniel and his friends to also put them to death. So you have to try to imagine what they're experiencing here, their faces here. You, all these astrologers and magicians and enchanters, they're holding very high levels of honor and prestige, and they enjoyed just the superiority of Babylon and all of its beauty walking around. But now they have no security. So picture that. There's this commander named Arioch, and he's giving news just one after the next that, listen, your life is soon to be finished. And in fact, to, to paraphrase Dr. King, injustice to some threatens the injustice to all. So if the wise men of Babylon were dispensable, the question is, who wasn't? And so check it out what this means for everyone. When Arioch, the commander of the king's guard, had gone out to put to death the wise men of Babylon, Daniel spoke to him with wisdom and tact. He asked the king's officers, why did the king issue such a harsh decree? Arioch then explained the matter to Daniel. At this, Daniel went into the king and asked for time so that he might interpret the dream for him. So much is on the line for Daniel here. And it's like he responds by saying, listen, God's got this. It's all good. And he responds with wisdom and tact in that moment, as scripture says. Now, I haven't heard that, that word in a while, tact. What exactly does it mean? I had to look it up. Dictionary.com says that tact is a keen sense of what to say or do to avoid giving offense. And it's also, this is awesome, it's the skill of dealing with difficult or delicate situations. We need this. We need tact applied to our lives. A friend of mine is a waiter at a local restaurant, and she's mentioned in the past that some of the most difficult people to serve are folks who are coming out of church on Sunday for their lunch after church. And folks, we have a ways to go on tact, especially now for such a time as this, in 2020, as we navigate COVID, schooling, business, an election year, a lot has tested us this year, no doubt. And what we're going to see more deeply in the book of Daniel is that he praises God for being intimately watchful over the nations, over his life, over world events, and that he is empowered through the movement of the Holy Spirit to approach it to approach it all with wisdom and tact. So he does that. He keeps his head on his shoulders, and this buys him a few minutes, which leads to scene two, which is this, that in tough times, what does trust in God look like? And I think that there are two answers to this that we see in these scriptures, that first, he gathers his friends who rely on the God of heaven. Look what he does. Verse 17, then Daniel returned to his house and explained the matter to his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah. And he urged them to plead for mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery so that he and his friends might not be executed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. And so Daniel, he gathers a crew of some faithful, time-tested, persevering prayer partners, prayer servants who absolutely love the Lord. And they come together in Daniel's house. And what do they do? They plead for the mercy of God. To plead means to ask, to pray, to look for. And in this context, there's a lot of urgency. Do you have a Hananiah, a Mishael, 
an Azariah to call on and to pray with. I'm talking like pray, praying paramedic type folks who can be with you alongside you at the drop of a hat. And while they're praying, they're facing this very significant emergency. I think this is important to just pause for a moment and mention this, that our God isn't simply the God of emergencies, to just go to him when there is a crisis. I love what the artist Tadashi says about this very point. He says, I see you're all I need. Father God, I see you're all I need. To tell the truth, Lord, you're all I need. How you were meant to be much more than the God of emergencies. You're the God that elected me, chose me, selected me when no one else would mess with me, never neglected me. You even loved me when you corrected me. Hands down, you're the best to me. I wrote this song to tell you, Lord, you're all I need. I love that, that God is so much more than the God of emergencies, that yes, he's gonna be there for the crisis, for the trial, for the trouble, but God's also there in the day-to-day. As the old hymn says, every hour we need thee. And in prayer, that's what we experience. We experience God's presence. And that's why we need it every moment of every day. And I just wanna simply pause and express huge appreciation and gratitude for our prayer partners, our prayer teams that have been praying for the Franklin campus, for you. They've been praying over the state of our church. They've been praying over the community, the street, the block, the state, the nation, the globe. And we've had prayer servants be praying consistently all throughout COVID, prior to COVID, at the very birth of our church, dating back more than 10 years. You know who you are, and just on behalf of everybody, thank you. Thank you for praying. Thank you for teaching our church to continue to remain faithful in prayer and to plead for God's mercy as we see in the book of Daniel, because this is why I need to plug this. We believe in mountain-moving prayer as Jesus taught us how to pray with our faith to surrender it before the Lord. And so check these times out. There's early morning time, a great way to start off your week. Tuesday mornings at 6.30, you can come to Madison Place or you can go on a Google chat at that time or you can do another Google chat online prayer at nine o'clock on Sunday mornings just prior to this service. So these are opportunities to gather together in prayer. We believe in the gift of prayer. And specifically as it relates to this passage, there is a result. There is a conclusion that happens with persevering prayer. See what happens. During the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven and said, Praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes times and seasons. He deposes kings and raises up others. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. He reveals deep and hidden things and he knows what lies in darkness and light dwells with him. I thank and praise you, God of my ancestors. You have given me wisdom and power. You have made known to me what we asked of you. You have made known to us the dream of the king. So the next thing that Daniel does is that he just simply praises the Lord. He praises the Lord both privately and publicly because he's now received revelation for the king's dream. And I'm more than halfway done with my sermon here, and we still have no idea what the dream is about. But that's actually not the point. The point of this story is not the dream. We're going to get to it. But what we're seeing are all these pieces to apply right now, that there are limits to human wisdom, that dependence on God, what it really looks like when the going gets tough, that having people in your life who are go-to prayer servants are so key. It's having the courage to praise God even in advance. It's praising God even in advance for what he will do from whatever situation that you are in. There's just so much to apply from Daniel 2. This is an amazing passage. Let's continue. Daniel replied, No wise man, enchanter, magician, or diviner can explain to the king the mystery he is asked about. But 
There is a God in heaven. Somebody say that. There is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. He has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in days to come. Your dream and the visions that pass through your mind as you were lying in bed are these. As your majesty was lying there, your mind turned to things to come. And the revealer of mysteries showed you what is going to happen. As for me, this mystery has been revealed to me, not because I have greater wisdom than anyone else alive, but so that your majesty may know the interpretation and that you may understand what went through your mind. And now here is the dream. And just throwing this out there for our creative folks, I was thinking about throwing up a slide or two about what is depicted in the slide. But for our creative folks, feel free to draw. Feel free to, even for our kids, take a sheet of paper and draw down what you see in this dream because it has four parts. So depict it, visualize it in your mind's eye. Here we go. Your majesty looked and there before you stood a large statue, an enormous dazzling statue awesome in appearance. The head of the statue was made of pure gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, and its feet partly of iron and partly of baked clay. While you were watching, a rock was cut out, not by human hands. It's really important to remember that. And it struck the statue on its feet of iron and clay and smashed them. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were all broken to pieces and became like chaff on a threshing floor in the summer. The wind swept them away without leaving a trace. But the rock that struck the statue became a huge mountain and filled the whole earth. After you, another kingdom will arise inferior to yours. Next, a third kingdom one of bronze, will rule over the whole earth. Finally, there will be a fourth. In the time of those kings, check this out, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, nor will it be left to other people. It will crush all of those kingdoms and bring them to an end, but it will itself endure forever. This is the means of the vision of the rock cut out of the mountain, but not by human hands, a rock that broke the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold to pieces. The great God has shown the king what will take place in the future. The dream is true, and its interpretation is trustworthy. And my final scene that I want to share with you is praise to the God of heaven because that's what Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel are led to do as a result of this dream and the interpretation of it to simply praise the God of heaven. And here's why. Because he breaks it down about what happens with the statue. The head is all of gold, and that represents a Babylonian kingdom. Then after that is the chest, and that represents um, silver. And silver is the Persian empire that will come after that. Then after that is the Greek empire, the Greek kingdom that's represented by a bronze, bronze stomach and bronze thighs. And then underneath that are the legs, rock solid steel iron legs that represent the Roman kingdom. And given all of this, we see that each kingdom comes and goes. None of them last. One is replaced by another until we see the actual conclusion of the dream that the God of heaven, his kingdom, cannot be destroyed. It cannot be thwarted, as the old King James Version says. So what we see here is that Daniel, this brother, is preaching that the ultimate triumph of God's kingdom is 100% guaranteed. God's kingdom is not man-made. It does not follow the usual pattern of earthly kingdoms, like the rock that was not cut out by human hands. That's awesome. God's kingdom does not depend on the work or the character of an earthly king. That's why I love the word. The gospel is absolutely all over this, that the dream here points to a time. There's foreshadowing of when Jesus comes onto the scene during the Roman Empire. It's when he begins his ministry, very humble beginnings on the north shore of the Sea of Galilee. And what we see there is that he begins his ministry with these words. He says, listen, 
The time is now. The kingdom of God is here. Repent and believe the gospel. Because when you experience the good news of the kingdom of God, it leads you to a place of worship to praise the God of heaven. That's what Nebuchadnezzar does here. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell prostrate before Daniel and paid him honor and ordered that an offering and incense be presented to him. The king said to Daniel, Surely your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of mysteries, for you were able to reveal this mystery. So what we see here in Daniel 2 is this very clear truth that comes by way of a dream and interpretation that God's kingdom is forever. It's undefeatable. It is solid. It is the foundation of our lives. And this is all a pointing, right? It's a foreshadowing. It's pointing to what will happen later on in Scripture when Jesus first comes and he ushers in the kingdom of the gospel, the salvation of good news. He said, behold, the time is now. Repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we're living in that time now. We're living in the season of the Great Commission to therefore go and to make disciples and to teach them and train them and to raise them up and to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But all of this, of course, is pointing to what will take place at the very end, what the second coming of Jesus will look like, the final kingdom where the new heavens and the new earth will come. See this picture, this beautiful powerful picture of what will take place when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, what will happen, what we can anticipate and look forward to. The very last chapter of the Bible says, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven, heaven from God prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order. Hallelujah. For the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, it is done. I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this and I will be their God and they will be my children. So today we saw this beautiful picture, this beautiful narrative of these different scenes of what happens in Daniel 2. That scene one is about the limits of human wisdom. Scene two is about when things are really stressful, what does trust in God really look like? And then lastly, we looked at praise of God in heaven. But I want to just step back for a moment to something that was very particular. And I want to go back before Nebuchadnezzar's awesome conversion experience. I want to go back before the interpretation of the dream and the actual big dream itself. And I want to just focus in on this one line of Daniel meeting in his house with his friends, praying. Because everything was unknown. Things seemed pretty shaky. Their lives were on the line and they were pleading the Lord with the Lord, praying before him, lifting up their entire concerns before them. And I want to close by saying this. This is the power of a house church. You actually see a house gathering taking place here in Daniel 2. If you haven't signed up for a house church, please do so. These are great opportunities to begin meeting through health guidelines in various homes across the city. You can see the link below. But lastly, I want to close by reflecting on this slide together as we lay our trust down before God so that he raises us up. Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. His kingdom is here. His kingdom will never end. Let us be a people who surrender and trust our Savior Jesus Christ. 
And as you're watching this and as you're hearing music be played, pray this simple one-line prayer before God. Jesus, I trust you with and fill in the blank. Maybe it's something, maybe it's someone, maybe it's something that you're facing, but whatever it is, trust God with that. And pray this prayer, Jesus, I trust you with and fill it in. Amen and amen. I'm going to ask that if you are able to stand to your feet to receive God's blessing as you go forward into this week. God's blessing falls to us like rain. We just receive it. There's nothing based on our own merit that we do to deserve it. We just receive God's blessing that falls to us like rain. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord turn his face to shine upon you. May this be a week where you grow in the wisdom of God where you see based on the scriptures how to face difficult times by praying with one another and even praising God in an advance through it. Praising the God of heaven. Go forward this week in the power of God the Father's love for you. That Jesus Christ has given his life for you and that the Holy Spirit is with you to guide you forward in the purposes of the never-ending forever reigning kingdom of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen, amen, and amen. We love you. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you next week. God bless.